Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to have a little bit of a rant about tooling. So in my Roy rants, a lot of times they're not driven, it's just something that we call the series. They're not driven by hate or angst against anybody in particular, but I get this question a lot and so therefore uh, it, it begs the differ to take and go ahead and have a Roy rant about it. So I get the question all the time, what tool is better? Would you go press or would you go power hammer? Would you go gas forge or would you go coal forge? Would you go, you know, would you make it out of this steel or would you make it out of that steel? You know, is there a special kind of this or a special kind of that? Which one's better? You know, uh, port a band saw versus a regular band saw. You know, welder versus a different welder. I get a ton and I do mean a slew of these questions. Now, these are all great questions, but it is highlighting a mentality out there amongst the trade and amongst the craft of blacksmithing that there is some sort of superior option when it comes to tooling. And I am here to tell you that there is not. There are tools that get the job done, and then there's tools that get the job done more efficiently, and then there's tools that get the job done inefficiently but still get the job done, and then there's tools that don't get any of the above done. And in those cases, that tool is not the right tool for the job. So let it be very clear, when you are getting into blacksmithing, you need to take and get yourself a beginning set of tools. You need an anvil of some kind, you need a hammer of some kind, you need a vise of some kind, and you need a heat source of some kind. That's basically it. You can forge all of your hand tools out of coil spring, or you can buy hand tools from the local Harbor Freight or uh, you know, a lot of chisels and punches and things like that you can find uh, at garage sales and flea markets and secondhand stores, stuff like that. And that can start you on your way to taking and making every other type of tool that you need as a blacksmith. But you should not stay there. Those tools are not the best. Although you may be able to beat steel with a rock in your fists, does not mean that you should constantly be fisting steel, right? Like you should not be taking and smacking around steel with a rock for the rest of your life. We got above that for a reason. There's a reason why the craft grew and matured into something that it is today with the hammers and the anvils and the type of quote unquote proper tooling that we have today. So with that being said, since you are constantly supposed to be improving your setup and your gear, that would indicate to you right there that there is no best tool. Now, with that all being said, not every tool can you afford, and so therefore you might be making the purchasing choice between, let's say, once you get up to this point, a power hammer or a press. Now, when that comes into mind, you need to ask yourself, do you have space for a power hammer? Are the neighbors going to appreciate that power hammer beating away? Maybe into the hours of the wee hours of the evening because you can only forge when you get off work? Or are they going to be more inclined to put up with the whininess or the big loud hum that you're going to get from the pump, the hydraulic pump, on a press? Now there's ways of quieting that down, there's ways of quieting down a power hammer. Then you've got to ask yourself what type of work you're wanting to get into. And then look for videos that seem that do that the best. So if there's a if all you're trying to do is do closed die stuff and you're trying to squish out big billets of stuff and you're not trying to get a lot of taper or form um, but you know there's certain operations where the like the slow but high pressure uh, squeeze of a press can be handy then use a press if you need the versatility or the drawing out capabilities of a power hammer with some combo dies on it or something like that uh, and you need more of a kinetic energy more of a thump on the piece like a hammering to create a certain aesthetic then a hammer power hammer is going to be your best bet but neither one of those tools are better than the other same thing with a gas forge or coal forge you may live in an area that it doesn't matter whether you get a gas forge or a coal forge in that case more versatile is a coal forge unless you can't get coal for it then a gas forge is going to be your better bet either 
either piece of equipment will heat steel. It will heat modern steel very effectively. In the only case that it won't heat as effectively a gas forge compared to a coal forge will be when it comes to wrought iron. Wrought iron likes to be kept very, very hot. And as far as the cost efficiency of gas over coal, coal's going to win out every single day. Depending on where you're at, again, your locality, whether you're using natural gas or propane. Here in my area, here in the Dayton, Ohio region, propane is more expensive than my coal. My coal I can run all day in and run for just a mere few dollars a day, maybe five to ten bucks a day, versus propane I'm spending close to fifteen to twenty dollars a day, respectively, for about the same hour of burn time. So with that being said, that cost may be prohibitive or effective. But again, it all goes back to a tool is exactly that. It's a tool. There are no miracle tools out there. I hate to tell you that. There's no miracle hammers out there, shapes, forms, or otherwise. There's no miracle presses, no miracle power hammers, no miracle anvil shapes, sizes, or dimensions, or otherwise. There are tools to do the job that is at hand. And if you've got tools that aren't doing the job that's at hand, then you need to search for better tools and buy up from there. So that's it for this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, I greatly appreciate you watching this video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. I put out two new videos every single day, and we do two live streams a week. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching, and as always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.